Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is a video of how I painted my watercolor and mixed media, Earth Magic 2, The Tree of Life. We'll start out with lessons learned. I was commissioned to make a tree of life. It was a beautiful tree that I was sent an image of, and I had some inspirations for how to present it to the client. After I put a good bit of time into it, with the client's approval, the client suddenly decided to do the work himself and left me standing cold. I should have gotten a down payment and a contract, and I did not. Lesson learned, get a contract next time up front and take a down payment before you proceed. That way everybody's covered. I was left with a beautiful beginning of a tree that was not completed and it was too nice to not hold on to and develop in the future. But for the time being, I put it aside and let it sit. Here's how it looked. When I reapproached it, I covered up from side to side and right away saw some things that could be improved about it. I began with watercolor, doing some accent work. And as you can see, I had broken the surface into a dimensional surface by putting strips of paper down and painting around them as I developed it. So I had some interesting dimensional things going on just at the surface level as well as the subject matter. Now it was time to pull it together and do a completed work. Coming in with some darker watercolor tones, I'm continuing to add accents as I see would be needed for the tree for the shaded side. Also developing some of the dimensional lines that go down through the plane of the surface. With a painting like this, what do I have to lose? It's been sitting for three or more years. It never was going anywhere, so I might as well try some new things on it. I rarely throw out a painting, because if nothing else works, I can collage on top of it, and then repaint on top of a rice paper surface, and add a whole new textural dimension to the painting. In this case, I am coming in, in some cases, with opaque gouache and some white acrylic ink. I spray the surface down to get it good and damp. And then I start adding some color, some accent. And since it's sort of damp, it's spreading around a bit and not conforming into real stiff lines. Just want to see where it will go at this point. I'm developing the branches, accenting some of them more. And then I'm working on the top foliage. Some detailing on the bark. As I looked at this painting over the past years, I kept getting the feeling it should have some life of some kind circling the tree. What eventually came to me was the idea of some white birds flying around the tree. So that was the approach I planned to take. First, I wanted to develop the background to the point where I felt more comfortable with it. So I'm developing some hill feeling and slope. 
to give it a little more structure toward the foreground. And I like how the darks add some accent in the field. What I had done there was block off and then splatter with my brush. And I'm bringing in an abstracted tree in the middle ground as well. When I was blocking it off, I felt that area needed some more work. It was just too plain. Breaking the symmetry of the foliage in the canopy of the tree, bringing it down a little lower. It was too symmetrical. Also bringing in some shadows on the right side of the tree, on the ground more. And I think it's starting to pull together a little bit more as a tree subject with these details that I've added. Here I'm using a fan brush, which is a brush with the hair or bristles arranged in the shape of a fan. I was adding some detail. And now I've torn some white paper because I have my idea of white birds and I'm not sure how many white birds or exactly where they should be placed. So I arrange the paper briefly onto the surface to see where compositionally they would look good. And I'm beginning to paint my first white bird. I'm not a white bird expert, so I referenced a lot of pictures of white birds found out some things about anatomy of the wings when they fly, what the tails do. And then I began to paint after doing that research and some sketching work. I'm using white gouache and I'm also using to enhance and outline some white acrylic ink. For each placement of white paper scrap that looks right, I then begin painting a white bird in that spot. And I'm trying to make each bird in a different position. I've never painted birds flying around a tree before, or really around anything. So my challenge was how to make it appear that they were flying in an arrangement where they would go around the tree, come out the other side, and perhaps go back around again. And try to make them look somewhat realistic, since the tree is sort of realistic. Although this whole painting does have an element of fantasy to it. So bird number two is marked in and bird number three is beginning. I am just marking in the white shape at this point. I will be going back into those shapes and doing more detailing and shading. I also found I had to add about three or four more layers of white gouache because the underneath colors and the paper just kept soaking it all in and making it disappear. How many birds to paint? Generally, I will paint an odd number of objects. I do think that comes from the Orient and Oriental culture, but I'm not sure. So I decided to 
go with 11 white doves after arranging my papers around and counting. And so I continue More doves had flown into the picture. And now I'm trying to paint one that is going back behind the tree, but still shows a little bit. Sort of a fun challenge. How much do I show of the dove? And what actually would be showing? How long would the wings be before they get cut off from view by a branch? So I messed around with this one a good bit till I got it right. Experimenting around, where should the next doves go? What looks balanced, what looks bright? I decided to make one overlapping slightly on another, right up in the foreground, to make him look sort of like he's flying into the picture. This dove that I'm currently painting, you can actually see the white paint being affected by the color of the paint just underneath of it and soaking through to create a light bluish green type of color. So at this point I have to start to add some additional layers of white paint. As I'm painting I'm also considering several other things. For one, the light source. As you can see the painting has a light source on the top left which we would presume will be the sun in this case. So each bird will have to be shaded in the direction of the sun, with that being the brightest part and the shadowed part being on the opposite side. The other thing I'm trying to consider is the perspective. As the birds are closer to the viewer and the surface of the tree and the painting, they would be larger, whereas birds that are moving back into the space of the landscape would of course be smaller. So I'm trying to keep the proportions adjusted right. Uh, you can see many of the birds are sort of fading into the picture and not showing up much at all. So I have it in my mind that I'll be enhancing and darkening the colors around them so that they will stand out more. At this point, I'm also trying to make the tree work with the background showing through with the blue of the sky, making the blues a little brighter with another layer of wash. In this case, I'm mixing white gouache with some watercolor, cobalt blue. To keep it looking sky blue. And then I'm darkening the branches around it to make some cool effect of dark against light, almost like a stained glass window. And here you could see me darkening around some of the birds and starting to show them to stand out a little more against the more muted background colors because white against medium tones doesn't really pop too much. 
lose weight against darker tones or bright tones would certainly stand out more. I'm trying to make them brighter and darker around the birds without making it look artificial or fake and blend in the darkening and brightening that I'm doing. So it works within the picture. And there you see that bird stands out more now, doesn't it? Right against the tree trunk. I'm painting around the picture bird by bird. Darkening around each and every one. Not everywhere, but enough to try to make it stand out from the background more than it was. And you can see the birds better now as I enhance each coloring around the, the individuals. I'm visiting each bird now to start giving it its face and some shading. So each bird is getting a tiny little eye where the eye would show and a tiny little beak. You'll see my notebook there in the picture frame. At the end of each painting session, I will evaluate what I've gotten done. I'll put the painting up and away from me, and I'll decide what is needed next, or what is needed at some point. Where I need to brighten, highlight, shadow, fix something. Whatever I think strikes me at that moment, I write it down, because the next day I might forget it. and. If it was important enough to occur to me right after a four-hour painting session, it might be an important point to consider. So in my notebook, I'll write down my thoughts before I go off and make dinner or do whatever what else I'm doing that evening. And there's my book to remind me the next day. Most of my shading for these birds was done with a very nice color called oh indigo and van dyke brown mixed together some other shading was done with another nice color called Payne's gray because the birds have been painted with gouache the shading color mixed in with the gouache, blended together, and in some cases gave me a medium tone. It was a little harder to get a very dark tone unless I applied the coloring in a single stroke and then left it alone. Because as soon as you start to work it, the gouache will come loose and mix with the other color again. One of the things I'd written down the day before was to make some darker shadows in the clumps of foliage at the tree's canopy. So that is what I'm doing. Because they seem to need a little more definition up there and a little more dimension. And I think you can see how the dark colors that I'm using 
or adding that at this point. This was done mainly with a mixture of Hooker's Green and Dark mixed with indigo, which I find to be a very good tree leaf clump shading color combination. Although, of course, some purple mixed with Hooker's Green will also make its way in there. Back to the painting and doing some evaluation, covering up my quadrants and seeing what's needed in each quadrant. I'm continuing to do some fine tuning and adjustment. This painting and this video are different than my norm since I'm starting with something that was already half completed and then adding to it. It's interesting to see how your vision and ideas can change over the course of several years so that when you look at something with fresh eyes after some time has passed, you might see things that you would really want to do differently right from the start. And that's how I'm approaching this painting. I do continue to look at the painting by blocking off sections by putting it up and walking across the room or even outside and looking through the window at it so I can continue to get a fresh point of view of this painting as I work. All these things help me to show what I think should be done to make the painting better. Someone had written into this uh, YouTube video site and asked me to talk about the colors I use. In most of my paintings I use quite a wide palette. I have a lot of colors. I enjoy making complementary color schemes. So I use a lot of different colors almost to the point of rainbows at some point. But that's not what I'm trying to paint. What I'm trying to paint is a beautiful world, a paradise here, hope, a spiritual feeling, something just beautiful and peaceful to imagine in a dream. Some of the colors I've used are sap green, yellow, hooker's green dark, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, purple, viridian, I believe it's called Philo Magenta, Rose Matter, Yellow Ochre, and definitely some Burnt Sienna. Van Dyke Brown and Indigo were used to make my darkest colors. I don't generally use black unless I'm making a more graphic or what should you say? Less traditional type of approach to watercolor. In which case, anything goes. And if you feel that black is needed to make your painting look good, then by all means, use it. Continuing to work around, adding accents, and doing detailing. Doves were one of my biggest challenges because they had to be shaded correctly and I was trying to make them look at least somewhat realistic. Dove by dove I'm now coming back and adding more detailing and shading to each individual bird. This is quite time consuming. And they are painted and detailed, each one of them a number of times, till they look the way I think they should. I learned a lot about bird anatomy of flying birds when I was painting this painting because I did such detailed studying with my eyes.
when you use a reference photo to try to get the anatomy down for a creature, you have to compensate for the fact that the light source is going to be different in what you're looking at than what you might have set up in your composition. And you have to adjust where the lights and darks are and the shadows for where you set it up in your painting. What I'm frequently doing is painting in darker with my shading color and then coming back on top with a damp brush and blending it so that the gouache then blends with the darker color and allows for a natural looking soft shadow instead of a hard line. In some cases, I got the shading right on the first try. In other cases of some of these birds, I went back and readjusted them two or three times. Thirty-six fifty-two. skipping ahead here. This is adjustment number two for this bird. If I darken behind the tail of this bird, then I have to bring the darkening out into the, the scene of the field as well. So it looks natural and fits in. And I'm continuing to add darks around the birds. As well as mixing together some more sky color to show through the tree. The colors I'm using on the left there to mix with my white gouache are cerulean blue and cobalt blue. I'm also adding a little play at the surface where the tree meets the sky. The painting had been previously set up with a plastic wrap imprint, which created some cool lines, creases, and geometric forms. So I'm playing around with those little geometric forms with some darker colors. It's a very textural painting. And now back to working around the individual doves and making them stand out against the background. 
by painting darks and brights around the wings and the bodies. Adding another layer of white to each dove where the bright sunlight is hitting its strongest. And I'm using gouache still. Also adding a little highlighting on other spots as well. Between tree branches and on the tree trunk. I could then choose to leave these spots white or I can cover them over with some blues and let it mix. And changing the shape of the tail and body of this bird for the third time, because he wasn't right yet to my eye. Some of the birds just looked so natural and right when I painted them, and the others just gave me quite a struggle. Even though the challenges are sometimes difficult, though, I really enjoy them. And I love it when I finally get them right. I'm coming back into the white spots between the tree branches and adding some turquoise blue, in this case, to make some nice bright colors up there. In some cases, you may be able to see that I've mixed burnt sienna into the hooker's green and the sap green to make the foliage a little bit more orangey green or drab green. I really enjoy using all different shades of greens to convey trees and other plants, and I think it looks more natural than just one color of green and dark and light. Doing another evaluation by covering up, it's really coming together to my eye. And now I'm scrubbing in a little bit of watery white coloring to try to subdue some areas that might have gotten a little dark by mixing some gouache with some water. I'm not getting absolute coverage this way, but more of a transparent lightening. And I'm adding some final tweaks to make the doves stand out a little more, adding some shading. This will be the fourth or the fifth revision of that dove in the foreground left. I think I finally got him right. Adding a little bit more accent work where the tree meets the sky with those geometric shapes left from the previous plastic wrap print. Because I do like how they look and, and the texture they add to the sky. It feels interesting. And you know, if you were to add too much, you could usually take it off again by painting some water on and a gentle blotting with a paper towel or rag. What I'm doing here is adding a little bit of the dimensionality lines in the plane where I painted them out. 
from establishing where the line is and then painting darker on one side and lighter on the other. I think a future video may cover how I do this dimensional painting to make the surface really break up like this because it can provide some interesting ideas for watercolor as well as other mediums of course. It's done. Putting my signature on. I hope you enjoyed watching how I painted Earth Magic 2, Tree of Life. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And that way, if you ring the bell, you won't miss any future videos. There's links below that you can click on and go to so you can see some of my other places online where I have an art page on Facebook. I've written a blog about art and life. And I have some of the products that I use to create art. I also have a link to my art products page where you can buy my artwork as prints, canvases, on shower curtains, on coffee bugs, even on iPhones, casings, and all kinds of places. I welcome your comments and I will try to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.